Timu is one of the biggest e-commerce stores on the planet and they literally sell just about every kind of item you can imagine, from clothes to kitchenware to even photography gear. But what makes Timu slightly different is that you can actually purchase the products directly from the manufacturer, which means that the prices of some of these items are just insanely low compared to what you would usually expect to pay elsewhere. But are they actually any good? Well, I've handpicked some of the best-selling photography items as well as a few products that are just downright strange and we're going to be testing them out to see whether they're actually worthy of making it into your camera bag or whether they're just a big old steaming pile of Timu poo-poo or maybe somewhere in between. Although Timu have kindly offered to help support the channel by sponsoring this video, they haven't said in any way to me which products I can or can't review or more importantly what I can or can't say about them. All they've requested is that I'm just completely honest and open and tell you what I think about their products, which I'm obviously more than happy to do. As always, all the links to the products that I test in this video can be found in the video description and new users could even benefit from getting a free £100 coupon to spend in store by either using this code on screen or by using the link in the video description. Oh, and I've definitely left the best till last, so make sure you stick around for that. So let's get started with item number one, which is this. Woo! They are RGB light sticks. Now, the difference between this and what you pay on Amazon is this cost me about £16 or $20, whereas obviously online they can cost you way more than that, sometimes upwards of $100. Straight off the bat, I can tell this is a little bit on the plasticky side, which is far, you know, fair enough for a $20 light. But I think more importantly, does it actually work? Why has it got so much plastic on it? Let's replace it with my main light. Hang on. Light quality is pretty good, actually. I mean, realistically, you're not going to be using this to light yourself just with this one light. It's probably going to be something that sits in the background as sort of like a hair light. Being made out of plastic, the only benefit it does have is that it is very, very, very lightweight. Question is, is it strong enough? It doesn't feel like it's going to break. Although it is made of plastic, it feels pretty robust, to be fair. And obviously, you're not going to be hitting it like I am. You've only got seven colours to pick from, which is red, green, blue, yellow, light blue, pink, and then white. So it's not technically fully RGB, which is a bit of a fib. Naughty light. And it looks like you also have five different function modes. F1 does this weird pulsing thing. Mode two goes through all of the colours. Three is solid colour. Ah, four is blinding. And then you've got epilepsy mode, whichever one appreciates. Make it stop. It's got a thread on the bottom so you can attach it to a light stand which is quite nice and it charges by a USB. I would have liked it so that you could actually change like full RGB spectrum but for $20 you're probably asking a little bit much. So yeah, would this go into my camera bag? I think it would. It would. This is going in the good pile. Okay, next up on the list we have got a leather camera strap. So this is actually artificial leather, so it's vegan friendly, which is always nice. Save the animals and all that. It does look a little bit BDSM-esque, but you know, not that I know what that is. So all in this costs £34 or about $42, which isn't too bad. I mean, usually you can pay an absolute fortune for these kinds of straps. I'm going to put my cameras on the line now just to see if it actually does work. So these screw on at the bottom, like so. I don't know if I'm pulling this one off. I look like a shit Indiana Jones. But I mean, build quality is pretty good. <laughs> and you've also got a secondary safety thing maybe does that go in there i see i think this is like a safety harness thing that goes onto your uh, your dangly bits not those dangly bits your camera dangly bits it's a little bit in the way but i'd rather that than it falling off entirely so i kind of appreciate that give it the old tit jiggle test passing with flying colors how long to do this for I kind of like it. Again, for the price, I really can't knock it. It's it's very nicely made. All of the joints are proper metal. It's not plastic or anything. So yeah, I think this would actually make it into my camera bag. So up next, we've got a lens. It's one of these body cap lenses. I paid about £20 or about $25 for that, which I do think is a little bit pricey for what it is, because essentially it's just a camera body cap with a disposable camera lens stuck to it. I'd probably pay closer to like £10 or $15. That'd probably be fair. It does say that it's a 32 millimeter focal length stuck at F. 10 the results look as you would expect it kind of gives that toy camera kind of feel ultimately it does exactly what it says it's going to do the quality isn't horrendous it's not something i would use all of the time but if you kind of wanted i don't know a creative fun thing to play around with every now and again maybe with some direct flash that'd be cool then yeah this would probably go in my camera bag next we're going to venture into the world of the slightly weird Yes, that's right. I have bought a miniature umbrella for my camera. So the idea here is that it basically attaches to your hot shoe port and shelters your camera from the rain. How cool does that look? But does it work? Not really, no. This one I'm actually quite excited about. This is a belt fastener holder thing. If you know what a spider belt is, it's like that, but it actually attaches to your belt buckle. Let, let me show you. Avert your eyes pervert this threads through your belt and it sits on your hip like that and then this little thing screws into the bottom of your camera and then 
you can basically hang your camera off your hip like so. Now I look like a shit cowboy. <coughs> also has a lock there so you can lock it in place if you want to, look. Look at that. Fancy. Obviously, I've had a spider belt for a number of years now, and the one thing I will tell you immediately is that this feels like a five or six dollar item, whereas a spider belt is a way more expensive thing. The only thing that's metal about this is the bit that screws into the bottom of your camera. The rest of this is actually all plastic from what I can tell, so I suspect this isn't going to wear quite as well as a spider belt would, but fundamentally, it does work as well as a spider belt. Question is, how much do you trust a little lump of plastic to hold onto your camera? Me, not so much. So I think in theory, I like it. If this was metal, this would be going in my camera bag. But because it's plastic, I'm going to put it in no man's land and say, hmm, it's a, it's a maybe, maybe not. Next up, we've got one of the more expensive things that I bought on this lineup. And I say expensive in air quotes because none of this is really that expensive. But this cost me about £27 or about $34. And it's a Vortex Halo filter. It's basically a big old chunky bit of glass that creates a sort of a haloing effect around the edge of your frame, which I kind of like for portraits. I think that's cool. It's a cool thing to have in your bag. Would you use it all the time? Almost certainly not. But I think, again, if you were just taking some creative headshots with some nice golden hour sunlight coming in from behind. Mwah. In terms of build quality, it's actually very nicely built. Like I said, this is a big old thick bit of glass. It's not plastic. The filter thread itself is all made from metal. So this would live in my camera bag for sure. This is a multi-camera carrier holster system and basically makes you look like a SWAT team. The bag smells musty. It loses a mark for musty bag. Shouldn't be sniffing another man's musty bag. Anyway, enough of that. Let me get in. One second. I bought it with the extra camera holder thing so I can carry two cameras, not just the one. Perforated eardrum from the Velcro. So you've got camera one, camera two. These connect to the bottom of your camera like so. And then they slot in like that. Look, it's like a baby carrier from a Sony. Whee, whee. So these bits attach onto here so that when you actually pull this out, at least you've got a lifeline, which is good. Another one on the other side. Apart from looking like some kind of press photographer from a war zone, it's actually pretty comfortable. Like, I like the fact that it's on the front. There's a reason why they design baby carriers like this, and this thing weighs as much as a baby at times when you've got a big lens on it. The one thing I do think it is missing is some sort of lock. I feel like if you happen to lean over a bit too far, there's a chance, a small chance that that could slide out of there. But I guess if you've got these safety harness things on, that's not so much of an issue. So all in all, would I use it? Yes, it's functional. No. Function over fashion and all that. Okay, so alongside the big stuff, I did also get a bunch of smaller accessories. So I'm just going to quick fire a bunch of the smaller stuff because they're not quite as exciting, but still very good. First up, we've got these like neoprene stretchy bag lens holder things, which can be used on your SWAT team vest for even more tactical lens goodness. Look at that. Hang my bag off there. <laughs> I've also got this waterproof camera backpack, which also has a bunch of dividers in it, which is pretty damn good considering how much money you would pay for a backpack. A decent sized camera in there and four or five lenses sweet i also managed to pick up this gorilla pod style tripod which is nice and grippy actually and the quality is pretty damn good for 15 quid got a nice ball head joint on the top which tightens up and doesn't wiggle around at all has actually got a spirit level on it as well which you don't always see on cheaper tripods but does it grip it grips! So I'll admit this next one isn't technically a photography piece of equipment. However, they popped up on my feed while I was scrolling through stuff and I was like, this would be perfect for the studio. They're actually a pair of mop holders and they come with this self-adhesive back that obviously you stick to your wall and then they're meant for holding your mop and your broom and all that, which is boring. So what I'm gonna use them for instead is holding light stands. Ta -da! See, not just a hat rack, you know? So I've definitely saved the best till last. We've got ourselves a drone. So this promises to be a 4K dual camera drone, all for £45. Supposedly it has obstacle avoidance, a HD camera, all right, they've downgraded it from 4K already, optical flow location, a remote control lens, modular battery, dual switching lenses, a 360 degree roll. Does that mean you can actually do tricks with this? I guess we'll find out. And headless mode. <laughs> headless mode. What on earth does that mean? It does actually come in quite a nice little carry case. It's very, very light. So obviously we're not going to be going over any sort of weight limitations or anything like that. It does feel very, very cheap. I'm not going to lie. So we've got our two cameras here, one of which is rotated Hopefully that hasn't broken. The cameras look very, very small. I suspect they are the kind of cameras that you'd get from like old cell phones and stuff like that. So 
I'm not holding out too much optimism for the image quality, I'll be honest. Anyway, let's uh, take her out for a spin. Chunks away! Oh, 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 oh. Where's it going? Where's it going? I can't control it! Not near the power line. It's just going forward. I literally can't control it. It's just going forward. I have no control. It's gone, this is going. It's going for an adventure. But right, come back, you bastard. I, it's gone. <laughs> I literally lost it. Good. So although that flight didn't go to plan, I will be fair here and say that a lot of that might have been caused by my own incompetence rather than the actual drone. So I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt. However, let's be honest, the image quality was about as good as we were going to expect for a 50 quid drone. There's no stabilization, so even a slight gust of wind is going to create super shaky footage. And the build quality in general wasn't fantastic. So I think inevitably this was always going to end up in the no pile for me.